If I look extra busted, it's not because I'm extra busted, it's because I have a new camera with new quality, so that's why. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Ariana and I'm kind of in between a student and a nurse because I graduated nursing school but I don't have my license yet so I'm technically not a nurse so I'm that. And this video is gonna be my level three experience. I finished level three in December, so it's been a while since I've been out of level three, but I'm finally getting around to making this video. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first thing I wanna talk about is my overall experience with level three. Um, I would say it's a really fun level. It's probably, I would say one of my favorites because of like the stuff that we did in it, but also one of the most challenging levels if I were to rank them I would definitely rank it level one for sure was the hardest for me and obviously this is just my experience so you may have a different one you may a lot of people that are in my cohort would probably rank the levels differently than me but this is how I personally rank them I think level one is the hardest because it's the transition level you are it's your first level and you have no idea what nursing school is like and you find out what nursing school is like in level one so that was personally my hardest level and then I would say level three is my next hardest it's just because of how time-consuming it is you have a lot of classes you have a lot of labs you have a lot of clinicals and it kind of all adds up and it's especially hard if you don't know how to manage your time so level three is when you really have to manage your time and be really diligent about that so yeah that's level three and then i would say level two because of med surge is pretty hard but it's your only hard class that level so you get to spend a little bit more time um focusing on med surge and then i would say level four obviously is last because there really isn't too much to it i'll get more into that in my level four video which should be coming up after this video but yeah, that's how I'd rank them. And let's get into a little bit more about level three. Okay, so the way my school does it is the whole um, semester, you have critical care and then you have peds and OB as well, but that's gonna be split up into a uh, half of a semester. So you can either have peds first or OB first and then like vice versa for the second half of it. So I had peds first and it was just extra hard with peds first because we have these things called performance-based assessments they were pbas for short which kind of test your knowledge and skills and it's really i don't know if every school has this i think that they do it's probably called something different but if you've had them you know what i'm talking about it's very like just thinking about them gives me like anxiety right now but um yeah they're really intense. So you have an extra one, at least for my school, for pediatrics on top of the one that you already were gonna have for critical care. So if you have peds first, then you have two right off the bat and it's really like scary and nerve wracking. But that's besides the point. That's my experience with PBAs and like starting off level three was two PBAs back to back and you kind of technically have a third PBA. It's a med math PBA, which is basically just doing the math of the uh, medications and you can only miss one out of 10 to get a passing grade. If you miss more, you have to do it all over again. So that's that, you have that for every single level. Um, yeah, every single level you have that um, for my school, Grand Canyon University. And yeah. The med pass for critical care PBA that is um, working with the pumps and um, hanging a secondary line as opposed to level two where you only had to do a primary. You have to do a secondary and a primary for this level. And then the peds one is pretty much the same thing as a regular uh, med pass, but you are uh, calculating dosages to the pediatric weight, I believe kind of a long time ago so I'm pretty sure that's how it went but don't quote me on it those are it for the PBAs OB does not have any 
So if you go to my school, be crossing your fingers that you have OB first, so you have more time to focus on each individual PBA, but if not, it's fine, you'll get through it. Next thing I wanna talk about is reading for each level. I talk about what classes to read for, or what classes I read for, not necessarily that you should take my recommendations, but what classes I read for, what classes I didn't read for because I didn't find it that helpful. So for level three, definitely 100% read your clinical care book. If you don't already have the clinical companion for the Lewis book, I think it's called, for like it's med surgeon critical care, um, if that's the textbook you use, you definitely need this. It's um, 10 out of 10 would recommend getting it. It really just simplifies everything and breaks it down and it's way less reading. So you can either read that or read your textbook, but I definitely recommend reading for critical care. It's a very hard class. And then for OB and Peds, personally, I didn't read, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't read. I got a B in Peds, so I probably should have read for that class. I think Peds is a little bit more harder than OB just because the stages of development and stuff like that, like it's a little bit more than OB I would say so I would leave that one up to you whether or not to read for peds um OB I really didn't find it necessary to read obviously for both these classes peds or OB if you're struggling definitely read the book and use your own judgment with that next thing I want to talk about is studying for all these classes for here I wrote it down <laughs> for um critical care uh, like I said, I used the Clinical Companion, definitely use that. I also um, read the PowerPoints that were given to us. I reread those and then I wrote notes in class and before the exams I would be sure to write all of my notes out again so it kind of solidifies in my brain a little bit more. And then I would also make flashcards of the things that I wasn't 100% on yet to quiz myself on and I think that worked pretty well for me. For OB and Peds, pretty much the same thing, um, but I did not read the book, like I said before. I did the same thing with writing notes and rewriting them and then the flashcards to solidify that information. The only thing different I did with Peds was the vaccination schedules. They're so hard to remember, so definitely be making flashcards of the vaccination schedules, of what vaccinations to get when, what, how many months, how many doses you get, all that kind of stuff. It's a lot to remember, so. Um, flashcards for that really helps. Okay, now I'm getting into my class schedule, what it was like for me, so you could kind of get an idea. It's probably not gonna be the same for you, but I'll just show you mine so you could get an idea. So here it is. It's what it looked like. I had critical care um, at nine o'clock on Mondays and Fridays. So that one was two days a week. And then, um, the ones where it's like different colors, it's either peds or OB, you don't have those at the same time. But when your classes do change, you're gonna have the class that you didn't have at the same exact time, just with a different teacher. And obviously it's a different class. I had peds slash OB, whatever, when I was having during the um, that time in the semester, I would have that at one and ended at three. So three hour class for that class and critical care was two and a half hours just because we had it the whole entire semester. And then you also have labs for these classes. Um, we didn't have any OB labs, but we did have PEDS lab. PEDS lab was four hours and you don't necessarily have it every week, especially because you only have it for half the semester. But when you do have it, it's four hours and mine was on a Wednesday. And then for critical care, I feel like we had this one way more often, probably because the class was an entire semester. But when we did have this one, it was four hours. Um, and then getting into my clinical schedules, you can also see my clinicals are here. Obviously they didn't um, go on at the same time. Actually, you could have some that overlap by probably just one week, but that isn't the biggest of deals. I don't think I had any that overlapped at all. I'm pretty sure I didn't have any that overlapped, but <clears throat> I had my PEDS clinicals. Those were at PCH the best peds hospital if you go to my school you definitely want to try to get into pch phoenix children's hospital for your peds clinicals you'll have the best experience anyway i had those from 6 30 to 6 30. um we only had two days of these clinicals because it's more of a specialty 
type um, of nursing. I just want to get the basics of it and then once you are hired you'll get more of that if you want to be a peds nurse. So yeah, we just had two days of clinicals for pediatrics. You can either be on a peds floor in a like adult hospital or you can be at a children's hospital on pretty much any floor. So how it happened with me is I was at a children's hospital and since we were there for two days, I was on two different floors. One of them was a step-down unit from the PICU pediatric intensive care unit and it was more geared towards the respiratory patients and some of them were on vents, it was kind of sad. Um, and then the second floor that I was on was a kind of a mix of a lot of things. It was like GI, some like endocrine, a lot of different things for that one. So yeah, those are the two floors that I was on. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, a lot of the nurses just have fun the whole time because it's like peds and they wanna have fun. You just try to make it fun for them because it's a really scary time in their life. No kid should ever have to end up in a hospital and it's really sad when it does happen. So you just try to make the best of it with them. And I can't really speak for if you're on a pediatric floor in a regular hospital because I didn't have that, but that is an option for you to get placed there. So just know that as well. And then OB, I had um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Super early clinical, super far clinical. Um, we were waking up very early for that one. But we only had three OB clinicals, same thing. It's a specialty type of nursing, so we wanna get like the basics covered and kind of expose us to it, but not really in depth. Because if you wanna be a different type of nurse, you don't really wanna be in more than three clinical days worth of something different. You know what I mean? Was there a total of three times and you can switch from um, postpartum, which is after you had the baby, um, labor and delivery, which is when you're actually having the baby. And um, I think it's called antepartum where you're kind of just there being monitored and like on bed rest, like type of thing. And for my hospital specifically, I don't think that every hospital does this, but we were allowed to be in the nursery, which is what I was doing for my first time. And what was really cool about that one was I followed around a nurse that was seconding at every delivery. What this nurse does is they go to every delivery and um, check on baby because everyone else on labor and delivery is like more focused on the mom and the um, nursery nurse is going to be focused on baby while I, just to make sure that there's enough people there in case one is not doing well or the other or both. So yeah, I was following that nurse so I pretty much got to see every delivery they had that day which was awesome. I definitely recommend doing that if the hospital uh, allows you to do that. And then the second day I was on uh, labor and delivery, super fun. I didn't get to see all the deliveries just because you follow around one nurse and usually the nurse only has one to two patients and usually they either one of them gives birth or none of them gives birth. It's just kind of a waiting game. And the third day I was there, I was also on labor and delivery again. And it was really cool because I had a patient go into the OR for a C-section. So that's also a possibility at your OB clinicals is that you might be able to get into the OR to see a baby be born via C-section. So also very cool. I love the OR love that experience um and yeah that's just another thing that you get to see at clinicals and then critical care clinicals this is when you are either in the icu or um er um i love the er but again personal preference if you can get into the er definitely do it i didn't even know i liked the er until i went into the ER for clinicals and now that's what I want to do so definitely give everything a try keep an open mind and you might be surprised about what you might like anyway I had this for four weeks it was 6 30 a.m. to 6 30 p.m. and like I said it was only four of them I was in the ER three days um, out of the four and then I see you on one of the days Love the ER. That's probably why I only had one day in the ICU. Um, 
but yeah you just see some crazy stuff and the environment is just it's to die for i love it um it's not everyone's cup of tea but yeah yeah that's pretty much it for all my clinical experiences in that level and i think that pretty much wraps everything up that i had to say about level three um if you guys have any questions as always please leave them down in the comments if you have more personal questions um i've opened up my instagram dms and you can ask me on there i'll leave my instagram in the description and yeah i think that's pretty much it i hope you guys stay healthy and have a great day i'll see you in my next video bye